Now the prisoner could think more clearly. All his senses had returned. They were even sharper than before. He heard sounds he never heard before, that no man's ears ever heard. The flying wings of small insects, the movement of a fish. His eyes saw more than just the trees along the river. They saw every leaf on the trees. And they saw the thin lines in the leaves. And he saw the bridge with the wall at one end. He saw the soldiers and the captain on the bridge. They shouted and they pointed at him. They looked like giant monsters. As he looked, he heard gunfire. <coughs> Something hit the water near his head. Now there was a second shot. He saw one soldier shooting at him. He knew he had to get to the forest and escape. He heard an officer call to the other soldiers to shoot. The prisoner went down into the river, deep, as far as he could. The water made a great noise in his ears, but he heard the shots. As he came up to the top again, he saw the bullets hit the water. Some of them touched his face and hands. One even fell into the top of his shirt. He felt the heat of the bullet on his back. When his head came out of the water for air, he saw that he was farther away from the soldiers, and he began swimming strongly. As he swam, the soldiers fired their rifles. Then they fired their cannon at him. But nothing hit him. Then, suddenly, he could not swim. He was caught in a whirlpool which kept turning him around and around. This was the end, he thought. Then, just as suddenly as it had caught him, the whirlpool lifted him and threw him out of the river. He was on land. He kissed the ground. He looked around him. There was a pink light in the air. The wind seemed to make music as it blew through the trees. He wanted to stay there. But the cannon fired again, and he heard the bullets above his head. He got up and ran into the forest. At last, he found a road toward his house. It was a wide, straight road. Yet it looked like a road that never had any travelers on it. No farms, no houses on its sides, only tall, black trees. In the tall, black trees the prisoner heard strange voices. Some of them spoke in words that he could not understand. His neck began to hurt. When he touched it, it felt very large. His eyes hurt so much that he could not close them. His feet moved, but he could not feel the road. As he walked, he was in a kind of sleep, now half awake, half asleep. He found himself at the door of his house. His lovely wife ran to him. Ah, at last. He put his arms about his beautiful wife. And just then, he felt a terrible pain in the back of his neck. All around him, there was a great white light and the sound of a cannon and then, then, darkness and silence. 
The prisoner was dead. His neck was broken. His body hung at the end of a rope. It kept swinging from side to side. Swinging gently under a hole in Owl Creek Bridge. Our story today 